Today in this video I am going to explain how to solve a transportation problem. Generic transportation problems are subjective in language. So I have taken an exemplary question over here. Once I will read for you to make you understand the concept. So the question is there is a factory located at each of the two places P and Q from these locations. A certain commodity is delivered to each of the three depots situated at A, B and C. The weekly requirements of the depots are 5, 5 and 4 units respectively while the production capacity of the factories at P and Q are 8 and 6 units respectively. The cost of the transportation per unit is given below in the form of a table. This is the table for the transportation cost. These are the costs in rupees and the cost for transportation of one unit from P to A is 16, from P to B is 10, from P to C is 15 and transportation cost in rupees for transporting one unit from Q to A is 10, from Q to B is 12 and from Q to C is 10. The question is how many units should be transported from each factory to each depot in order that the transportation cost is minimum. So this is the problem we have to tackle. To solve a transportation problem the first step is to draw a rough diagram. How to draw a rough diagram? First we have to make two circles in vertical lines. In vertical line two circles for factories and we write the name of the factory as P and Q. In three circles in horizontal line for depots. And we write the name of the depots as A, B and C. Then we write the production capacity of the factories inside the circle P and Q. So according to our problem the production capacity of the factories at P and Q are 8 quintals and 6 uh, sorry 8 units and 6 units respectively. So the production capacity of P is 8 units and production capacity of Q is Q units. So write down 8 in the circle P and 6 in the circle of Q. And the weekly requirement of the depots are 5, 5 and 4 units respectively. Means the weekly requirement of depot A is 5 unit, for depot B is 5 unit and for depot C is 4 units. So we write the requirements, weekly requirements inside these circles 5, 5, 4. 5 units for 5A and 5 units for B and 4 units for C. After writing this, the next step is arrow marking. First we mark an arrow from P to A and we write X on this and second arrow from P to B and we write Y on this. 
then we mark a third arrow from P to C. Obviously, the production capacity of P is 8 units and if P transported X units to A and Y units to B, so how many units are left at P for transporting to C? Obviously, we have to subtract the sum of X and Y from 8. So, those are the available units for depot C. So, 8 minus X plus Y. These units are transported to C. <coughs> now, we come to factory Q. Since the weekly requirement of depot A is 5 units and it received X units from P, so how many units it requires it requires to receive from Q factory obviously 5 minus X because 5 is the requirement and X it received from P so it will receive from Q 5 minus X similarly depot B receives Y units from factory P and its weekly requirement is 5. So, how many units it requires to be transported from factory Q? That is 5 minus Y. And last arrow from Q to C. <coughs> now, if 4 is the requirement of depot C, and it receives 8 minus x plus y from factory P. So, the balancing amount of the units required by depot C is received from factory Q. That will be the total requirement minus the number of the units received from factory P. So, 4 minus square bracket 8 minus x plus y. So, if we simplify this, we get x plus y because, because of this minus this sign will be positive. So, we have written positive x plus y first and here 4 minus 8 and we get 4 minus 8 as minus 4. So, minus 4. So, x plus y minus 4 we get from this. So, our diagram is completed. Now in the next step what we have to do, we have to write all these arbitrary terms written on the arrows in the form of greater than or equal to zero equalities. Means x is greater than or equal to zero, y is greater than or equal to zero, 8 minus x plus y is greater than or equal to 0 or if we simplify this <coughs> x plus y is less than or equal to 8. Next 5 minus x is greater than or equal to 0 or we get from this in equation transposing x to this side 5 is greater than or equal to x or x is less than or equal to 5. Similarly 5 minus y is greater than or equal to 0 or simplifying this transposing y to right hand side we get 5 is greater than y greater than or equal to y or we may write y is less than or equal to 5. Now the last x plus y minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0 or transposing 4 to right hand side we get x plus y is greater than or equal to 0. So, these are the constraints of the linear programming problem derived from the language of this transportation problem. Now we have to form the objective function that is the cost, transportation cost. So first we assume 
let z is the transport transportation cost transportation cost so now we have to form the expression for z what we have to do to form the expression for z as we have this problem so now we have to observe the table from p to a one unit is transported in 16 rupees so how many units we have transported from p to a is x so this x should be multiplied by 16 because one unit cost 16 rupees to be transported from p to a and we have transported x units from p to a so just go on multiplying in this way 16x now from p to b y and one unit cost rupees 10 to be transported from p to b so plus <coughs> now plus 10 y 10 y plus next is 8 minus x plus y units transported from p to c so we have to observe the table from p to c one unit is transported in 16 rupees 15 rupees 15 rupees will multiply the number of units transported from p to c that is 8 minus x plus y so 15 into 8 minus x plus y close now come to the factory q now from q factory 5 minus x units are transported from from q factory 6 5 minus x units are transported to depot a in our table the cost of transportation from q to a for one unit is 10 rupees so we have to write plus 10 and how many units 5 minus x so write down multiplied by 5 minus x plus from q to b 12 rupees write down 12 and number of units from q to b is 5 minus y so multiply it by 5 minus y plus now from q to c one unit is transported for 10 rupees so 10 and how many units we have transported from q to c that is x plus y minus 4 so write down here x plus y minus 4 now just we have to simplify this 16 x plus 10 y plus 120 minus 15 x minus 15 y plus 50 minus 10 x plus 12 5 is 60 12 minus y minus 12 y now here plus 10 x plus 10 y minus 40 so further we simplify this we write 16x and 10x positive there are two terms of x which are positive and two terms are negative so 16x and 10x two positive terms that is 26x are positive and minus 10x and minus 15x that is minus 25x are negative so 26 minus 25 26 minus 
25 x now why this term is positive and this term is negative and this term is negative and this term is positive two terms are positive that is 10 y and 10 y that is 20 y 20 and the negative terms are minus 15 y and minus 12 y so just mark these two we have taken and minus 12 y minus 15 y that is minus 27 y okay now the constant terms 120 is positive 50 is positive 60 is positive 40 is negative so there are three terms which are positive 120 50 60 so just add them up 120 plus 50 170 170 and 60 230 230 minus 40 as it is now simplifying this we get 26 minus 25 1 that is x 20 minus 27 minus 7 so minus 7 y and 230 minus 40 is plus 190 so we get z is equal to x minus 7 y plus 1 90. Now we have to formulate the linear programming problem that is we have to minimize the total cost of transportation so minimize z that is transportation cost and we have calculated z as x minus 7 pi plus 190 so minimize that uh, is equal to x minus 7y plus 190 subject to subject to now we have to list the constraints so the constants are first we write the big constants so the x plus y is less than or equal to 8 one constant is this subject to x plus y is less than or equal to 8 second constant is x plus y minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0 or x plus y is greater than or equal to 4. So, x plus y is greater than or equal to 4. Third constraint, we have x is less than or equal to 5, x is less than or equal to 5 and y is less than or equal to 5 y is less than or equal to 5 and two non-negativity constants that is x is greater than or equal to 0 and y is greater than or equal to 0 so we may write them collectively x y is greater than or equal to 0 so this is our linear programming problem we have formulated with the help of the given language of linear programming problem. Now we have to solve it graphically.